okay. good morning to all once again <coughs> so today we'll start the uh, unit for design of digital fir filters in the last class we initiated and we have given uh, i gave you the glimpse of what this particular uh, uh, chapter or the unit is all about in the previous classes we learned how to design an analog iir filter now this is continuation of the analog iir filter uh, where in order to design digital iir filter it is possible to design iir uh, digital iir if and only if i have a transfer function of analog iir filter clear now uh, i hope you all know the terminologies uh, like uh, transfer function of the filter what do you mean by transfer function it is nothing but h of s in our case okay so why h of s so s stands for laplace transform h of s is the transfer function of a given system what is the system in this case system is nothing but system is nothing but iir filter is that clear filter is my system in this case now whenever we want to design the system so that must be h of uh, s is equal to some numerator to the denominator i we uh, we consider that the numerator consisting of poles and denominator consisting of zeros sorry the the numerator consisting of zeros and denominator consisting of poles now what do you mean by zeros and uh, uh, the denominator poles poles and zeros are nothing but a characteristic equation basically which is nothing but the characteristic equation or a, a polynomial equation and this polynomial equation may be a second order or in other way i can say it as a it might be a quadratic polynomial or it might be a the cubic polynomial so uh, or it may be a fourth order fifth order and it continues when i say that second order filter it is nothing but sir yes sorry to interrupt uh, okay. sir please 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 just a minute just a minute hold on ha huh, tell me prajakta share your screen sir illa illa ina start madilla screen share madakke madu okay okay i'm just uh, uh, giving you the glance of uh, the previous sessions that's it so so in the uh, in in terms of uh, finding the characteristic equation root of the characteristic equation which means that uh, you all aware of uh, uh, understanding how to uh, find out the roots of a quadratic equation right now in this case those roots are nothing but a either it might be a poles or it might be a zeros if you are uh, finding the roots of a characteristic equation of the numerator polynomial then that is called as a the the uh, that is called as a uh, poles uh, zeros of the uh, characteristic equation the same thing if you are trying to find the the roots of the character equation of denominator polynomial then it is called as poles of that particular characteristic equation now what is the significance of this uh, the poles and zeros you got to know that poles and zeros are not derived from nothing but a, from a uh, the root characteristic uh, equation now what significance these uh, poles and zeros means now as i told you when i say that filter it is nothing but a selecting a particular frequency now if i the the frequencies which i want to select which i need i call them as a poles or the frequencies which i want to suppress i don't want i want to filter out and that particular frequencies i call it as a zeros now if i don't if i if i don't need a particular frequency it is just nothing but a place a zero over there which is nothing but nullify that particular effect, uh, frequency effect effect so that's how 
the the poles and zeros concepts work okay now moving further let me share my screen now Okay, can you able to see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay. Now, in the last class, uh, we uh, gone through these uh, basics question like why digitalization in term why digitization is required in terms of uh, uh, the digital IR filter and what is the importance of uh, being uh, the digital circuits. So all these were. Uh, uh, discussed in the last class now in this class uh, the the once again i just go with a in a brief like we will going to discuss the three important types of uh, conversion of analog uh, ir filter to digital ir filter so one is of approximation of derivatives another one is impulse invariance method and third one is bilinear transformation method now so these three are very important approximations techniques uh, in order to move from IR filter, digi, IA, analog IR to digital IAR. Okay. Now the the main technique coming to now. Let me start with the uh, impulse invariance method. Then we'll uh, take up uh, the other two uh, the designs of uh, filter. Now, in terms of uh, what is the uh, the basic thing uh, in impulse invariance method? the students are uh, you must remember that you are trying to design h of z in this case see i am i am trying to design a digital filter a digital filter now <coughs> this is nothing but the h of z filter now what i am trying to do so which is nothing but i already have a designed filter that is analog iir filter you got to know how to design this then this will be having some transfer function numerator to denominator or uh, zeros and poles now this is nothing but conversion of this to this so this is what we are trying to do and and the conversions is of three important techniques one is impulse invariance technique that is first method and second one is numerical analysis or numerical approximation method and third important technique is bilinear transformation technique blt bilinear transformation technique this is these are the three important techniques that what we are studying now this is very simple the process what you should understand here is uh, where uh, you already have h of s okay now this is in terms of laplace transform now when i take a inverse laplace transform what this will be so this will be h of t right now what is h of t it is nothing but a one continuous signal so which is in this form right now, now i want to convert this to digitalization signal right what you need to do what is the how do you uh, go for uh, the converting this so it is nothing but taking the samples right so very uh, clearly what you need to do you got h of t you got h of t what you need to do you are supposed to take the samples how do you take so maybe at uh, uh, sample number one which means that entire time period you are supposed to divide it with some uh, periodic samples that so what we do i am going to get h of t later in point of time i am trying to uh, divide this samples with nt where uh, t is the sampling time this is all about 
so what is to what what i am going to get here now h of nt is going to be obtained so that is what the main okay so uh, see uh, i got uh, h of n signal here the, is, this is nothing but what is h of nt it is nothing but a sampled version of my h of t so now the main uh, aim is in this method the objective of this design is uh, an iir filter is to design an digital iir filter having a unit sample response of h of n so which means that i i should get somehow h of n that's it i have h of t make sure that you convert this into h of n see once you get this h of n what is this this is nothing but a discrete signal right so discrete time signal now what is this continuous time signal for continuous time signal we know what 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 uh, transformation technique we are supposed to adapt to move from h of uh, t to h of e for j omega so this is a transformation technique that what we apply for the laplace transform now uh, if i get h of n what we do so i apply the z transform so once again to get this into the h, h, h of e to the power of uh, or h of z right very simple and straight forward so in this uh, i have this now laplace version h of e to the power of j omega what i do i just go with the reverse order go to the inverse laplace transform then sample this so you will going to get a discrete uh, signal that's it very simple so h of t sigutte so once i get h of nt it is nothing but sampled versions now i simply say this as a h of n by uh, neglecting the sampling time that's it so what is to be done so now simply apply the z transfer formula for this now we will going to get h of z now later on to map this so this what we do is at the end so i got once again numerator to denominator in terms of h of z now what is to be done is uh, while mapping poles and zeros while mapping poles and zeros in terms of h of s what we used to do is uh, i used to have a, a, a laplace uh, domain so where uh, this is how uh, poles and zeros were mapped uh, on laplace uh, domain uh, now i should able to map this onto the z domain so when i say that z domain it is nothing but a, the within the unit circle why it is a, a unit circle so let me discuss in the uh, later point of time uh, why uh, we always consider that a unit circle is a stable system which means that for any uh, system that you design the radius of that should lie or less than the radius must be lesser than equal to 1 then only i will be calling this as uh, the stable system so unless and until if it is not the radius is not less than 1 the system is not going to be stable that's why many times uh, we check for whether the magnitude of z is less than 1 or not so it has to lie in this region then only the system is stable so h of z is stable so what what about in this condition it it should lie on the left hand side right so left hand side i told you why it is already because so uh, a to the power of minus j uh, or st right this is my definition and poles what value should it e to the power of uh, uh, and all the time uh, this is e to the power of plus j s t and what value if i give this these are the poles right these are the poles by giving what value this will be the negative so it is e to the power of all the time the the pole value must be the negative values right if at all if it is not negative values if it is positive values what happens so it will be increasing kind of uh, exponentially increasing and uh, the signal will going to be diverge it will not converge so when it start diverging it will lose its uh, stability so when i say that uh, stable the signal has to meet uh, and it has to reach out so at one point of time it has to reach the zero so that's why i always appreciate if poles lie on the left hand side so that it the signal will be something like e to the power of minus st so if i plot it so obviously at one point of time as time increases 
as time increases definitely it must reach to zero and then i call that particular signal as a convergent signal so once it is convergent the system is going to be stable system so that is the fundamental uh, idea regarding this similarly uh, in the z transform i always take care about whether the the, the radius of that particular signal is lie uh, within a unit circle or not so that's how we uh, decide the stability of the system so what is the thing so first design the so first we have h of s take the inverse laplace transform find out h of t then sample this so uh, now we'll going to get h of nt so now h of nt i'll omit this uh, sampling time i'm going to get this h of n so apply z transform so you will going to get a h of z value so later on point of time you need to map the poles of this s plane uh, on to z plane so this is the entire design process that what we follow here okay uh so coming to the part uh in this uh, case let me assume that h of s is equal to how do we write for a general iir filter analog iir filter for general iir uh, filter analog iir filter h of s is equal to the general form i can write this in terms of like uh, summation k equal to 1 to n ak divided by s ak what is the meaning of this so uh, generally uh, if i take any uh, h of s so this is how h of s will be there will be numerator some part uh, value so which is nothing but a gain so s into the s not or s in s minus s1 so later on uh, if i take this uh, what is that partial fraction method so i am going to get in terms of summation so I, in that sense i am taking this summation that's it and this is what the numerator value i consider this to be ak in this case and s minus of minus ak so usually so this is how it looks right so in this case i took it directly s plus ak so this is one of the pole for me this is for a stable system right uh, Uh, like way uh, where where n is nothing but number of poles how many poles are there that is going to be decided by n so n indicates number of poles fine what is ak ak is nothing but ak is nothing but gain factor fine then uh, what about small uh, what about this sp sp is nothing but minus ak or minus ak is nothing but a pole so it is the pole of kth value or so this is how i can write it right now therefore if i want to obtain h of t what is required for me initially so i required h of t how do i do it it is nothing but i have a uh, h of s which is nothing but a laplace now i apply the inverse laplace from this right so this is a general formula let me call this as equation 1 what is equation 1 equation 1 is nothing but a generalized form of my analog iir filter now what is to be done inverse laplace transform of i i put equation 1 the value of h of s in equation number 2 so that is summation k runs from 1 to n ak in the numerator denominator s plus ak fine now <coughs> look at this for which value you apply the inverse laplace transform see here the summation k runs from 1 to n is a constant and a discrete value ak is also a discrete value the varying term is nothing but this inverse laplace of 1 by s plus ak for which i need to apply the laplace value so what is the inverse laplace transform of this 1 by s plus ak so what you what you write here so inverse laplace transform of this how do you express e to the power of 
minus 80. This is the standard inverse Laplace. So this is the standard inverse Laplace. You might be, uh, you might remember uh, from your basic mathematics or even in network analysis, we used to solve such type of uh, problems. Now I replace its value. So summation k runs from 1 to n. I keep it as it is. A k is a constant value or which is going to be uh, changing with this. Now here it is a k. So I substitute a k. Okay. Now inverse Laplace of 1 by s plus a k is nothing but e to the power of minus a suffix k. This is t. Right. This is t. Now I got to know the value of h of t. So h of t is nothing but summation k runs from 1 to n a k into e to the power of minus a k t. Now what is to be done? The next process is sampling of this signal. That's it. So let me consider this uh, equation to be equation number 3. Now let me sample this Equa uh, uh, let me sample this. So that is nothing but t equal to nt. That is how we try to sample, right? Put t equal to nt in the above equation. So that is h of nt is equal to summation k runs from 1 to n a k e to the power of minus a k. Uh, or else okay nt so this is how we perform right so this is how uh, we go for sampling the uh, the the continuous time period signal <coughs> now what is to be applied here what, what we are supposed to do <coughs> so you got like something h of n i just omit this uh, for the timing i simply write this h of n so where uh, h of n for the uh, sake of easy of understanding, I just write in this way, right? Now I got I got h of n. So this is h of n. Now from h of t we obtained h of n. So this let me call this as equation four or five, four. Now we know that. What, what we know? Hmm? The Z transport definition. We know that the definition of Z transport H of Z is equal to or let me write here X of Z equal to what? Summation can anybody summation H of X of N into e to the power of or z to the power of minus n where z equal to e to the power of j omega if you remember properly right so this is how the z transform definition stands now what is the limit for this that that we are supposed to decide what is the variation of n so n will be moving from 0 to infinity because the transform is defined for only right hand side sequences not for the left hand LSS only for the RSS sequences. So for in order to maintain to be the stable signal. So therefore if I apply this technique or if I apply this definition to above then or let me write, rewrite. So this is h of n input into z to the power of minus n when n runs from 0 to positive infinity. So this is the definition of Z transform. Let me put equation 4 in equation 5. Equation 4 in equation 5. So therefore H of Z is equal to summation as it is. N runs from 0 to infinity. Okay. H of N value. What is H of N? So H of N value and uh, Z to the power of minus N as it is. So here h of n is nothing but summation k runs from 1 to n a k into e to the power of a k n t right so same thing i copied as it is in place of h of n that's it now we don't have a standard uh, 
uh, summations from running from 1 to n but in in fact i have a standard summation uh, definition from running from 0 to infinity so let me uh, interchange the sums here so let me take summation k runs from 1 to n outside okay so where k standing for ak so i should take along with this because this is uh, changing with respect to uh, k value so again summation n runs from 0 to infinity okay e to the power of minus a k t z t z to the power of minus n so all the parameters e to the power of value e to the power of a k n t and z to the power of minus n are varying with respect to variable n and the summation is also moving from n 0 to Okay, now till here we completed and I just take it outside summation n runs from 0 to infinity. I will just alter this. You look how it, uh, how it can be modified e to the power of t. I just write this as e to the power of t z inverse whole to the power of n. Can I write like this? So, because I have a standard definition for this, because we know that summation n runs from 0 to infinity a to the power of n, I have a standard definition for which I can write this uh, definition as 1 minus uh, 1 divided by 1 minus a. This is the uh, the standard definition what we have so what we do is I try to re shuffle the value of n I take it outside and I modified this summation in this forum so accordingly if I apply this particular the summation formula now how do I write this so finally h of z can be expressed in terms of summation k runs from 1 to n as it is a k I keep as it is now we have summation n running from 0 to infinity e to the power of minus a k t z inverse whole to the power of n I write it as 1 divided by 1 minus a what is a in this case entire thing that is e to the power of minus a k t z in which entire thing is a right so i'll rewrite here this into 1 divided by 1 minus e to the power of minus a k t z inverse that's it so once again summation k runs from 1 to n let me rewrite very properly a k divided by 1 minus e to the power of a k t z inverse. Now observe carefully this denominator term this denominator term is varying according to the value of k right which means that what is a k in this case what I told this is nothing but a poles of kth value right if there exist a four poles k value running from 1 to 4 as k changes I am going to get a four poles in the denominator this is nothing but a the denominator is nothing but a pole indication and this is by looking this equation I can uh, deliberately or I can conclude that this is once again a all pole okay numerator denominator numerator it don't have any zeros okay hence all pole only it consisting of a poles no zeros hence the name all pole what is this design is all about h of z so what is that digital digital okay the values are infinite so i i r filter that's it all pole digital i i r filter and this i call it as equation number so 6 
look at this equation i can rewrite this equation number 7 as ak divided by 1 minus e to the power of minus akt divided by z because z inverse right if you properly write this as z to the power of uh, z in the numerator okay z minus e to the power of minus akt so this is nothing but z equal to e to the power of minus ak so this is one of the pole right this is this should be zk this should be zk because as the value of k k equal to 0 k equal to 1 it changes the value of e to e k t will also varies accordingly so what is this this is nothing but poles on z plane that's it you got how to obtain the poles on z plane from the poles which were present in my s plane okay so it is as good as transformation transformation of poles from s plane to from s plane to z plane so if i transfer this pole from the s plane to z plane uh, that itself is a design of or conversion of analog filter to digital filter very simple and straightforward right that's it so i hope you got this concept here right so let me map this i need to map the frequencies see what is all about these poles poles are nothing but frequencies why we call them as a frequency because s is equal to e to the power of j omega t right what is this omega well, is omega is nothing but a co component of a frequency so that's why we call it as a frequency transformation from s plane to z plane that's it the other way so we need to map so the the next important is mapping of s plane to z plane s plane to z plane okay look at this so if you observe carefully the equation number 1 what was the equation number 1 uh, let me take this equation number 1 observe carefully i take this back here because i need to map s and z plane here basically so that is h of z h of s was equal to summation k runs from 1 to n ak divided by s plus ak okay now look at this h of z summation again k runs from 1 to n no difference in my summations the numerator gain is also same no change but only the poles are going to be lightly modified e to the power of minus akt into z inverse right so if i write this again uh, if i rewrite this h of z can be rewritten as summation k runs from 1 to n ak in the numerator as it is z minus e to the power of minus akt divided by z i'll take it in the numerator that's it now observe carefully what is s is equal to here the pole i call this as a pole sp sp is a pole in a s plane which is equal to which is equal to minus ak am i right so this is equal to minus ak so i just say that s is equal to sp in this plane and here here z is equal to if you observe carefully carefully this is pole in this case what is the pole e to the power of minus ak or uh, so this is sp right e to the power of k so this is ak right in this case so here also ak is present what i do is e to the power of sp i will write here that's it sp into t okay so in s plane s is equal to sp if i take the pole in the s plane in the z plane it is nothing but it is nothing but exponential to that power uh, the exponential to that particular pole that's it illi you know one value there let me assume that 
ಇಲ್ಲೊಂದು ಮೈನಸ್ ಟು ಇದೆ ಅನ್ಕೊಳ್ಳಿ ಇಲ್ಲೇನಾಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಇ ಟು ದಿ ಪವರ್ ಆಫ್ ಮೈನಸ್ ಟು ಆಗಿರುತ್ತೆ ಅದು ಅಷ್ಟೇ ಸೊ ದಟ್ಸ್ ಹೌ ಇಟ್ ವೇರಿಸ್ ಸೊ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ವಿ ಕಾಲ್ ಟಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಟು ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಸೊ ಮ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಆಫ್ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಟು ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಓಕೆ so i'll just uh, uh, take up one small concept here and let me uh, finish off this uh, class here so one more very important concept is frequency mapping illa enagutha s plane to z plane what we need to do is first point to transfer function map madidvi s plane in the z plane ige second important point eno antandre s s plane alli iro pole matte z plane alli iro ಪೋಲ್ ನ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಮಾಡ್ತಾ ಇದ್ದೀವಿ ವಿ ಆರ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಎ ಪೋಲ್ಸ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಸ್ ಪೇ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಇಂಪಾರ್ಟೆಂಟ್ ಏನಂತಂದ್ರೆ ಇಲ್ಲಿ ಇರ್ತಕ್ಕಂಥ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿನ ಇಲ್ಲಿಗೆ ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ಮಾಡಬೇಕು ಸೊ ವಿಚ್ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ದಟ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ಆಕ್ಸಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಐ ಕಾಲ್ ಇಟ್ ಎಸ್ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸಿ ಮ್ಯಾಪಿಂಗ್ ಇಂಡಿಕೇಟ್ಸ್ ದಟ್ ಹೌ ಡು ಯು ಮ್ಯಾಪ್ ದ ಫ್ರೀಕ್ವೆನ್ಸೀಸ್ ದಟ್ ವರ್ ಪ್ರೆಸೆಂಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಎಸ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಟು ಝೆಡ್ ಪ್ಲೇನ್ ಓಕೆ ಸೊ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಎಸ್ ಇಸ್ ಈಕ್ವಲ್ ಟು ಹಿಯರ್ how do you write s equal to j omega fine now if i map this to z plane how do you write z is equal to e to the power of z is equal to e to the power of j omega t why put this sp what is sp equal to sp is nothing but j omega i replace this sp by j omega in z domain that's it so the frequency how do you map in case of s plane if there exists a frequency called j omega component when i transfer this j omega from s domain to z domain it will become exponential value e to the power of j omega t this is how the frequency is going to be mapped from s plane to z plane clear is there any doubts here and obviously the magnitude of this should be equal to 1 why it is 1 why not any other value why it is 1 why not any other value here so that we will discuss in a next class okay and i'll also uh, there is one more small important and uh, interesting topping that how of, uh, still uh, there is a continuation of this how actually the frequencies are going to be mapped from s plane to z plane i'll uh, literally draw the s plane and i will move those poles to z plane okay so is there any doubts let me stop recording uh, so if you have any doubts feel free to ask so we'll have some uh, questionnaires and uh, we'll discuss if you have any doubts